Uh, this, this presentation, uh, your presentation will tie in a little bit because you definitely want to back up before you do this. So, uh, <laughs> hey everyone, uh, we're going to be talking now about upgrading WordPress to PHP 8. Um, so, who am I? My name is Jeff Marks. Uh, I've been working with WordPress for probably 15 plus years, give or take a year or two. I'm currently a software engineer at Dot Dash Meredith. And that includes such brands as uh, People Magazine, Entertainment Weekly, Eating Well, and many others. And we just did an upgrade, the PHP upgrade for these brands. And I'll tell you, it was kind of tough. <laughs> yeah. So you're blocking part of the screen. Oh, I'm sorry. Got yeah. it. So all right. So what is PHP? So PHP or a hypertext preprocessor is the most popular server-side language on the internet today. And as of March 2023 about 80% of all websites are still relying on PHP. Some people will try to tell you that PHP is dying, it's a relic, relic technology, but you can see that the numbers tell a different story. Um, 810 million websites, can't be wrong. So, um, so PHP also powers like some of the most popular CMSs and tools on the internet, such as Drupal, Joomla, Joomla, Laravel, and of course our favorite product, WordPress. And WordPress obviously powers over 40% of websites on the web. Why do, I need, why do we need to upgrade? So a lot of sites are on PHP 7.4, and that went end of life in November 2022. So that means that, that you're not getting the most recent local updates from the local PHP community, and you're not gonna get the most recent security patches, so you're gonna be vulnerable to hackers and other issues. And if you have to perform this upgrade under, if your site gets hacked or compromised, and you have to perform this upgrade when you're under that kind of duress, and your site's gone, and you have to do that upgrade while your site is out. You're not gonna, you're not gonna enjoy that. So it's important to get on top of that. Um, the other uh, reason is performance. Uh, PHP eight improve, PHP eight offers a lot of dramatic improvements, including um, better memory and better better speed, and your site will perform better, and your users will appreciate that. So. <laughs> Um, as of January 2023, according to a uh, survey by Kinsta, like the WordPress hosting company, only 10% of WordPress sites on the internet have upgraded to PHP 8. And that number, I got that from ChatGPT, even though it came from Kinsta. So take that with a grain of salt if you want. But that would mean that possibly 90% of WordPress sites could be vulnerable to hackers attacking sites with outdated versions of PHP. So some general best practices to keep in mind, and these are things you really should just keep in mind, uh, not just when it's time to upgrade, but these are things you should be doing throughout the year, every month. Stay on top of your plugins. Make sure all your plugins and themes are on their latest versions. And this is a big one. Uh, take, keep a plug, keep an inventory, an ongoing inventory of your plugins. Make sure you remove any plugins that are unneeded. Uh, I have a lot of clients and friends that have sites, they have like 30 different plugins, Half of them, like 10 of them, they don't even know what they do anymore. They're just sitting there, and I'll tell you that those are the plugins, the ones that you don't use, in, use anymore, are the ones that are likely to get exploited and take your site down. And the third thing is just to keep your WordPress version up to date, and that's a very easy thing to do. <laughs> a lot of times for in your dashboard, there'll be a click to update WordPress to the latest version, or you go to wordpress.org and just download the latest version. So why is this? So what is different about this upgrade? So PHP eight just improves. It introduces so many breaking changes, and they will most likely break your site if you just try to flip the switch and don't prepare for it. So there's so many different changes and so many different functions and things that it's important to take these steps and to avoid seeing this uh, white screen of death, the updated white screen of death, which I know we've all seen before. So how do we avoid that? Testing. Um, the most important tool for testing is to have a local environment. And that is basically a piece of some software you can download so you can run your website on your laptop so you can make changes without any consequences, without anyone seeing it. Um, local by Flywheel is my preference. Um, that is, I mean, that, that just offers a feature to allow you to switch back and forth, as you can see by my slide here. It allows you to switch back and forth between 7, 8, and 8.1, and that will let you make changes, test them out, see if it, your changes work. 
And while you're doing that kind of testing, you should definitely put this line in your WP config. It puts your website into debug mode. And especially when you activate this on 7.4, and obviously it goes without saying you want to do this on a, definitely not on a public facing site. So when you activate this, you're going to see warnings that are going to float to the top of your browser. And you're going to see that there's one here that's uh, from Jeff's awesome plug. <laughs> <laughs> that these warnings will actually become errors when you switch to PHP. <clears throat> and speaking of that, so when you're on PHP 8 and you might get that white screen to death, you need to consult your logs. Now here is just, I put this on my slide, but this is specifically where my logs are, but of course this can be different depending on whether you're on a remote server or a local server. You need to know where your logs are so you can go to your logs and find these errors and be able to figure out, get more information on what might be causing the issue. And I will just say that <laughs> this is a very popular issue, a non-static method being called statically. I promise you when you do your upgrade, you're gonna run into that error. Um, so you can see that this message here will give you, you know, give you a clue as to where the plugins come from. So you see it gives you the method name and the, and the function name. So you can see Jeff's awesome plugin. So if you have a plugin named Jeff's awesome plugin, you know in this case that's what's causing the error. All right, so when to, to handle that specific problem, you have a couple different options. Now, of course, me being a developer, I'm gonna just jump into the code and fix it. And I can just show you the fix here really quick. I mean, it's just, you can see, it's just, I'm not going to go into like object-oriented programming and why, you know, why this is actually an error, but, error, but you can see here, this is just a one word change. So that is, you'll find that a lot of the problems, a lot of these PHP 7 to 8 problems are gonna be very easy to solve but it, on an individual basis, it's really more of like tracking all them down and fixing them on you know on a one-on-one -on -one basis. That's going to be more of the issue. All right. So um, also, so if you don't want to write code and your business owner, you have a small business website and you just want to you know find a plugin that will do the same thing that your problematic plugin does, but it will be hopefully compatible with PHP 8. And I included a link down here to help you do that. So you, you know you go into Google, you find a plugin, you have to test it and upload it, and then hopefully that will solve the problem. So that's so either way you would fix the issue. So so when you so you basically just wash, rinse, rinse, repeat. You repeat all these troubleshooting techniques, and you do it one on one, stomp each problem out, you know, until you finally get to the point where your website works, and then you can confidently switch your site to PHP eight, and everyone will be happy. So I included a few resources that helped me with, uh, with my upgrade. Um, you have the PHP official PHP 8.0 migration guide, and then just a couple of links that kind of help you walk through the process that I found, I found them to be very helpful when I did it. Uh, and here I got um, some social media links, uh, my LinkedIn, Twitter, email, and a link to the slides if you, if you want to reach out or with any specific questions. But, um, that's about it, and I'm happy to take some questions if anyone has any. <laughs> any questions? All right, thank you very much.